hey YouTube, instead of coming with another Halloween Cup team, I decided this would be much more um, both entertaining and informative because it is the Lil Pokemon Play Pokemon Championship this weekend, or I guess it's just regional this weekend. Uh, I guess it's the regional championship. Um, and what they do after the day one is they go over the top used Pokemon. So top 12 Pokemon day one, 150 trainers with the percentages of the people who use them. So what I wanted to do in this video is I wanted to go over these top 12 Pokemon and give you the imp why they're so strong. Because there's some very, very obvious ones like Cloth Sire, Alligator. We'll go over them very, very quickly. But then there's not some of the obvious ones like Eridos and Galarian Moltres. So I'm going to go over like all 12 of these Pokemon, why they're strong. And again, when you see 12 Pokemon so heavily used um, in a regional Pokemon, you should be thinking like are, th this should translate to the Great League, right? Now it's not exactly the same because how you build in a show six you're doing a lot of covering your weaknesses and like what has a lot of coverage what is safe stuff like that um whereas as opposed to in like a pick three uh gbl style how you team build is a lot different that being said there's definitely something to looking at these 12 pokemon about why they're being used in their strengths so that is what we're going to do in this video so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to minimize these and put them in the corner over here so i have them that i can reference them as i open up um pv poke and I, why are you already on a zoom roll? Because I was eight minutes into the video and realized my audio didn't work. But, okay, let's go over with the, basically, Pokemon in the top 15 that should be very obvious to you why they're in the top 15. If they're not, we'll go over a quick, quick lesson on why. Clodsire is ranked one and two. Um, one having Sludge Bomb, one having Stone Edge, both running Earthquake. Uh, this thing has a ton going for it. Um, the stat product distribution, whenever you have a low attack and high defense and stamina, you are automatically at an advantage. And if you look at this list, you are going to see a lot of the Pokemon on this list fit this stat, stat product right here. Low attack, good or great defense or stamina for a high overall stat product. So you're going to see that a lot. When you have that, it's a huge advantage. Two, Poison Sting got buff. Poison Sting was one of the fastest one of the best moves in the game for charging 4.5 energy per turn so a charge charge super fast um, but now it got even more damage this year so poison thing got buffed with the damage um, and then you have either a stab sledge bomb um, for your grass you have a nuke stone edge for your flyers you have earthquake nuke for your steels so like three really really good moves um, and why you get away with it is because you can take a lot of charge moves so the fact that you charge so fast and get to these moves relatively fast, right? Like only six to a sludge bomb, seven to a stone edge, and eight on the first one to a earthquake, and even less on the second, right? Only seven to an earthquake on the second and six to an earth stone edge. So that's only 12 turns worth of moves to get to the second stone edge. Like it, it charges very, very fast. And then in terms of typings, I think it's typing actually hurts it more than it helps it, quite honestly. A lot of resistances... Um, but not a lot of super useful resistances. Resistances, quite honestly, fighting was the big one um, that was huge before. But your weaknesses of ground and water are kind of more prevalent than your six resistances here. So that kind of hurts you a bit. But just the move set and your stat product just offsets any sort of weaknesses. So that's an obvious one. Mandibuzz is an obvious one. Hey, look at that stat product distribution. Does it look familiar? Yes, it does. And you're going to see it a few more times on the top 15 here. So already talked about that. Snarl, super fast energy charging, 4.33 energy per turn. Um, it's now running Dark Pulse, which gives you that better damage per energy than Foul Play. And uh, more importantly, its typings, I think, is mostly a benefit. Um, not a lot of electric, still not a lot of ice. There's Dugong, but like otherwise not a ton of ice. Um, and then Rock and Fairy, but then like, a lot of ground out here right now double resisting that these ghosts got buffed all over the place so resist the ghost but i think its main strength is even though aerial ace is a terrible terrible move still even though you get same type attack bonus um what it has going for it and why it's so ranked so high is because flying got nerfed into the ground this season so all your glygars skarmory is down to 83 glygar is down to 120 um all these flyers that were Relevant Altaria got nerfed to 166, Mantine to 190, Pelipper to 191 because Wing Attack got nerfed. So it killed all the flyers, which means we needed new flyers to rise to the top. Hence, Mandibuzz and Stat Product and everything so highly ranked. 
which is why I'm a little surprised to see Galarian Moltres above it. I'm going to go over that um, when I mean, we look at sort of like the other ones here. But let's finish the coverage of the top Pokemon. Um, for Alligator, it is a Shadow for Alligator most people are using. Not surprising. Um, stat product is average at uh, 123 attack, 117 defense, 124 stamina. So it's an average stat product uh, compared to the other ones. But it has one of the best fast moves in the game in Shadow Claw. Super fast energy charging, 4 energy and 3.6 damage. So that damage to energy combo is amazing. And more importantly, Hydro Cannon with stab same type attack bonus with the shadow doing 115 damage for only 40 energy so to get there in five which is 10 overall turns worth of moves um for a 2.88 damage per energy and doing 115 damage to throw out 115 damage in in 10 turns with the moves is insane uh which is why this pokemon has been broken as soon as it got shadow claw um, getting that fast energy with with the hard hitting move at that um, to get to those hydro cannons so quick is just a deadly deadly combo. And again, water has always been dominated because uh, grass and electric the weaknesses don't aren't aren't around as much because the strengths of grass and electric in the main series games don't translate to GBL. Um, and then you also pick up like a few weak, few resistances here, but not a lot that we see in the meta. So I'm not, it's not even like about the weaknesses and, and resistances. It's more just like shadow claw. And Hydro Cannon is the main reason. A couple other things in the top 15 here. Uh, Malamar. I just, again, very similar stat product to for Alligator. Slightly lower attack, slightly higher stamina. Um, did I just mention how Shadow Claw is one of the best fast moves in the game with the 4 energy, 3.6 damage per turn? Well, Psywave is a clone from that perspective, but it's a one-turn move. So it's Shadow Claw's two-turn move. Psywave is a one-turn move, which makes it even better because you can easily time moves. You can get out. You can um, catch easier. You can do a bunch of things easier. So it has um, a better Shadow Claw <laughs> with two charge moves in Foul Play, which does like pretty good damage for only 45 energy. And same thing with Super Power, only 40 energy um, to get 85 damage, 2.13. And again, on the counts, 10, 10 turns worth to get to the suit power and 12 turns to get to a foul play. So you're getting to these moves pretty quickly. Typing wise, I kind of, it's one of those unique things where it's like it only has one resistance and two weaknesses because of the combined typing. Um, but if you don't see, there's not a lot of, there's some fairy and some bug. I shouldn't say none, but like there's not a lot of this right now. Um, so it makes it easier to kind of run this because you're not running into really any weaknesses. So Malamar is up there. Azumarill is the number one ranked Pokemon, or one number one used Pokemon. And again, if you played GBL since season one, like I have, Azumarill has been the number one GBL Pokemon in, G in rankings GBL for like nine seasons. And then Bubble got nerfed and it went down to like top 10. Um, and then got Bubble got buffed again. <laughs> so it's back up there. And okay, not going to repeat myself. Stat product, fantastic. Bubble, Bubble's not an amazing move, um, but you're so bulky. And these Hydro Cannons play roughs um, are pretty, like it's slow to get to, right? Six play roughs, six fast moves at three turn is 18 turns worth of moves and 21 to get to a Hydro or if you want to go Ice Beam, which is probably the recommended move set is only 15. But that's way slower than the other Pokemon I just talked about, like 10 and 12. So it's slower to get to the moves. Um, Bubble's not as good a move, but you have coverage in these moves, coverage against Grass with your Ice Beam. Player off is just like a hard hitting move, and same thing with Hydro, and then just your your um, typing really helps you out here. Again, not a lot of electric, not a lot of grass. Yes, there's poison, but look at all those resistances. Water everywhere. Fighting used to be everywhere. Um, dark, there was an okay mail before. So a lot of resistances, a lot of the bulk is what's, what's carrying Azumarill. And Toxapex and Dunsplash are also in the top 15. Oh, look, look at that stat product. Fantastic. Looks very similar. Um, nothing got buffed here, but with that stat product and with its insane amount of resistances, water, poison, I, I steal some ice, fire, fighting, fairy bug, like a ton of resistances, not a lot of electric. There is a lot of ground, not a lot of psychic. So really you only need to watch out for ground. Poison jab is so hard hitting. And again, history lesson. 
your main poison jab user was Nidoqueen because it had poison fang, you can lower your opponent's defense and just out like poison jab. But what what makes um, Toxpec so strong is that it is so bulky. So you are actually doing a ton of damage with that poison jab. Brian did one of the worst moves in the game, 50 for 72. We're just going to ignore that. And basically any scenario, you just go for the sludge wave, which is a great nuke. 132 damage. So doing a lot of damage with your fast move um, and then getting to a nuke is great. Obviously very slow to get to it. 2 times 10 is 20, um, but it's a nuke and you're bulky and your fast move is doing a lot of damage. So that combo really adds up. Um, and again, I already went over the typings there. And the last one, top 15, is Dunsparce. Dunsparce became um, rollout got buffed, right? So your energy is, pr is very, very strong, but now it actually does more damage. And just these moves, they're not good moves, um, but 45, like Rockslide got nerfed, so non-stab Rockslide is not good. Drill Run is decent. What these, these two moves give you an insane amount of coverage though, right? You pretty much cover your your self across the board and the most important thing about why it's so strong this season um fighting got nerfed counter users got nerfed into the ground right so your top fighters are pangoro machamp oh yeah not on this list right um galade hackmo tell me when you see a fighter on the list primeape chestnut como machoke medi polyrath are we seeing any fighters on this list no, we are not seeing any fighters in top 12 for the reason that these fighters are not that good. They're very, very glassy against all these. Again, look at the stat power on Pangoro. Super high attack, low defense, low stamina. Machamp, same thing. Brutally high attack, low defense, low stamina. What did I talk about all these other Pokemon? They have low attacks and high defense stamina. Now let's go to the Pokemon that used to be good. Hey, Medi, what's your stat product? Oh, yeah, low attack and high defense and stamina. Polyrath probably not as high, but similar-ish. Yeah, 116 with no 19, 138, 119 overall, right? The stat product matters. And if you have a stat product like these guys, uh, you better have an insane moveset. And arguably they do. Like Karate Chop is now four and a half, three, one of the best fast moves as well in the game. And Close Combat is an absolute nuke. Um, but as you're seeing in the top Pokemon here, um, one, fighting is resisted by a lot of the stuff in this, right? Azumarill, um, Toxpex, Eridos. Um, I guess these are neutral flyers. Claude Sire, like all, fighting is resisted on all these Pokemon. So not a lot of fighters, which makes Dunsparce even better. Okay, a couple of things I'll just kind of gloss over. Uh, Dugong has been one of the best safe swaps in this meta for years and years and years. Again, stat product fills every single need that you want. Um, Icy Wind lowers the attack guaranteed and Drill Run gives you great coverage and then typings. Um, four weaknesses, but again, not a lot of those four in the meta right now. Some rock now, but the other three not as much. And then resisting water and ice, the water comes in more handy against like um, like uh, Azumarill. Azum oh, I guess ice is Azumarill, but for Alligator and, and stuff like that. So Dugong's always been top. Superior has been a top for like a few seasons now. It's one of the best grass Pokemon. And again, stat product. Venusaur just does not have this. So you get that stat product. Um, you get a fast charging Vine Whip and then Frenzy. Uh, community Day move. 45 energy, 120 damage, 2.67. You just bulk it and you throw the Frenzy. And there's a lot of stuff weak to grass, but there just isn't a lot of grass in this meta. So it gets by being one of the grass best grass type Pokemon in the meta with a hard hitting frenzy plant, which is that's, that's why it's in the top 12. Okay, I went over the entire top row, why they're on the list. I went over talk specs, went over superior, went over mandibuzz. There's three Pokemon on this list that, one of them for sure, I'm not surprised. One of them, I am I can believe. The third one, I, I get it to a certain extent, but I don't agree with it. So let's start with the one I 100% agree with, Drapion. If you've seen my videos on Drapion, I've put out multiple videos on Drapion saying Drapion is the second best safe swap in the Great League and the Ultra League behind for Alligator. Poison Sting, again, fast charging and got buffed, so it's doing more damage. But more importantly, it only takes four to get to an Aquatail, five to get to a Crunch, which is the recommended moveset on this. Yeah, Aquatail and Crunch. So you are spamming 
Aqua Tails with only four Poison Stings and Crunch with only five. And Crunch with same type attack bonus and Shadow is doing 100 damage for an only 45 energy move. 2.24 damage per energy. To knock off a 100 damage move, um, again, this is why Fralegate is so strong. You're knocking off like 116 damage move in five, in 10. To knock off a 100 damage move in 10, in 10 turns worth of moves is also fantastic. Um, so you have that. You have one that comes even faster. Again, not as good. 35 for 66. But just the spam of this thing is insane. And Hello Weaknesses 1. Now, that one is everywhere right now. Ground is, is very, very prevalent in the meta. Um, but one weakness for five resistances, I take that any day. Uh, Psychic, Poison, Grass, Ghost, Dark. Um, so resisting all those things and only having one weakness. So one weakness, super spammy. Your weakness in ground, if it's just a pure ground, you hit super effective with Aqua Tail, right? Your one weakness you can hit super effective against. Now it resists your Poison Sting, so that's an issue. But, um, you know, you're probably going to lose those ground matches, but at least you have something for it. So... With its spamminess and only one weakness, it is truly one of the best safe swaps in this meta. If you have not used it, definitely invest in one. I do think Shadow is better if you have access to it. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Eridos. Eridos, what I think is happening here, why is Eridos on this list? So let's just go over a few things here. Stat product, not amazing. 125 attack, really low defense. Stamina is decent. So you can take some charge moves, but you're pretty glassy. Pro. Poison. Let me just see. What's the recommended move set? Lunge and Treble Ace. Okay. Poison Sting got buffed. I've already gone over that multiple times. So fast charging with the buffed. Lunge is a move that's always lowered the attack. 1.6 damage per energy. Uh, and again, pretty quick to get to. Two Poison Stings. Two turns. Five. Two turns. Ten to get to. So pretty quick to get to. At the same time, Trailblaze got buffed. Now, why I don't... There's two things here. I Trailblaze is still not a good move. 45 energy for 65 damage, 1.44. But it does two things here. One, it boosts your attack. I don't care about it boosting your attack when your attack is Poison Sting. Poison Sting still only does 2.4 damage. Like It's not like you're boosting Shadow Claw. It's not like you're boosting Charm or Razor Leap. It's, it's not like you're boosting like like Karate Chop. You're boosting a poison sting. So with that boost, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. What it does though is it can potentially trap um mud boys. Because the mud boys, like um now Cloud Sire only takes neutral to it because it's half poison itself. But if you get a mud boy like Whiskash, Quagsire, Swampert. Um, you now have a move that hits double super effective against them. So they see the poison, like, oh, I'm a mud boy, I can easily take it. And then they come in, and it's like, oh, this thing has trailblaze, I'm in trouble because it one spams so fast, five, 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 and now hits double super effective. So it's kind of a trap move. So it got boosted. I still think in general it's not a good move, but with that buff, um, it definitely has some strength that it did not have before. More importantly, I think the one of the reasons that it's up there. Like, there's a ton of poisons already on this list, right? Um, there's Claude Sire number three. There is Toxpex at number seven here. There's Man or eight there. There's Manda, there's Jesus. Drapion at 10. Um, there are a ton of other poisons in this meta. Um, Quillfish, Weezing, Eridos down here. I don't think it's there because it's a poison. I think it's there because it's a bug. And I think it's replacing Charge Bug. And I think that's its main purpose. Um, is now the number one top-ranked bug Pokemon in GBL. And so what does bug do? Bug hits super effective against a few things. Um, oh, it actually doesn't show here. It just shows your weaknesses and resistances. So let's just actually start with this uh, because I kind of glossed over this. In terms of resistances, double resist fighting, single resist poison, uh, which is nice. And then weak to flying, nerf, psychic, not a lot of... Rock and fire, not a lot of. So your main weaknesses, you're not seeing a lot of. It hits super effective bug against a few things off, off the top of my head. One is grass. So you have your superior and other grass, mostly superior, covered. Two is dark. Three is psychic. So you are hitting double super effective against Malamar with your lunges. 
Um, so dark. Yeah, I think those are the three that hit super effective against. I may be missing one. No, I think psychic, dark, um, and grass. I think those are just the three that hit super effective against. Um, so you can at least hit neutral against like Mandibus too. So I think that I think Charge Bug was so so strong, but with Claude Sire being the number one ranked Pokemon GBL and forty three percent using it day one, it is everywhere, and you can't use Charge Bug against Claude Sire because Claude Sire resists every single one of your moves. Volt Switch, X Scissor, Discharge. So to come in here with the bug to have that coverage for all those things that I just mentioned, while being able to hit um, neutral with Trailblaze gives it a slight leg up on Charger Bug, which is why I think it's on this list. Galarian Moltres. Now, it is more used than Mandibas, slightly on this list, um, even though it is ranked way, way lower here. So in terms of stat product, it's actually okay. Um, 115 attack, 137 defense, 122 stamina. I must say it feels like it pl plays glassier than that, quite honestly. Step product doesn't lie, but it feels like it plays glossier than that. Now, why is it up there? It has the same strengths as Mandibus, that there are not a lot of flyers in this meta. So we are looking for flyers. Jump Pluff is up there, but it's also acting more as a grass than eh, it's kind of acting the same. But like in terms of charge moves, energy ball hits harder than aerial ace, right? So it's and when I say it's acting more of a grass, that's what I mean. Your your actual harder hitting move is grass. You can argue that it's the same with Dark Pulse on this. However, Galarian Moltres is the first one where your hardest hitting move is a flying move, and it's Brave Bird. So we've been missing that Brave Bird nu uh, ner nuke since Skarmory got buffed. So to have a nuke there is a strength, as opposed to Mana Buzz where you just kind of have to spam aerial aces. Sucker Punch got buffed, so now you have a decently ch charging three and a half energy per turn with a really really hard hitting 4.8 damage per turn and again i kind of already went over the strengths of the t the weak the typings right so being a flyer with not a lot of them having a nuke and brave bird 55 energy 156 damage 2.84 is fantastic the weaknesses of this thing it's recommending ancient power brave bird and why is it recommending a terrible 1.33 ancient power two reasons um one reason really the the i was gonna say 1b but it's not a 1b it's like a there's one reason and then like 10 reasons lower is ancient power has a 10 percent chance to buff your attack and defense so if you buff if you buff your attack and defense and those sucker punches are now doing more and your defense is higher that's fantastic that's an argument the real reason is it's slow to charge on payback and it's slow to charge on brave bird itself two turns eight to get to the brave bird so it takes 16 turns worth of moves to get to the to this right we talked about eight to aqua tail and drapion we talked about 10 to the hydros on for alligator we talked about like a lot of these things are 8 10 12. it's 16 to get to the brave bird so it's already slower to get to the brave bird which is a nuke and kills yourself so you need a bait move seven and six so the main reason for ancient power quite honestly is to provide yourself a bait move now i've used glaring moltres before um with wing attack last yeah i used it with wing attack last year when it was faster charging i always felt that it was very slow to get to and the damage you take was never worth it so the problem is i never felt that brave bird nuked like it's it sorry it hurts, but it, it never like one shot a ton of stuff. Um, it still leaves some of these bulkier, like Azumarill, Claude Sire, Dunsparce. They probably all live, mm, maybe not with the Sucker Punch buff. That was, okay, so that was the past. Maybe that's why it plays differently. In the past, they would all live the Brave Bird, but that was with the Wing Attack. So maybe with Sucker Punch adding up, it prob Brave Bird probably does one shot. Let me just run the Sims on, let me just run the Sims on this quickly. Um, 17 and 21, a zoom roll you're losing because you're a thing. I just want to see shields down, um, how much a brave bird. Oh, look. 
Oh no, you don't get your Brave Bird here. Let me say he just shields down. I just want to see how much a Brave Bird does. Yeah, so a Brave Bird only does 88 damage to Azumarill. And again, um, the, the damage considers a bunch of things. It considers your attack. Like there's a formula for it. It's not just like the 110 damage equals 110 there. It's a factor of like your attack stat and their defense stat. So there's a lot that goes into the thing. So Brave Bird does 88 damage, which is only 46% to Azumarill. I've got to imagine that Dunsparce, um, looks like you win Dunsparce. Nope, you lose Dunsparce as well. And I've got to believe that it lives um, It lives a Brave Bird. So you're baiting an Ancient Power. You're not even getting to a Brave Bird. Okay, show me the zeros. Can you live one Rock Slide? Look it, it's going Ancient Power first. And why not? Why is going Ancient Power first? Because you don't one shot with a Brave Bird. That's why it's showing in these Sims go Ancient Power because you're trying to get to it. Okay, what the hell? The Sim is the Sim is whack. It does not one shot, but the Sucker Punch damage does have it. So a Brave Bird to that's the thing. The Brave Bird to um, Dunsparce in itself does fifty eight percent. But these Sucker Punches are adding enough that you can just go straight Sucker Punch and Brave Bird. So perhaps this actually is a new nuking. You can use it that way. Okay. Okay. It makes it makes more sense now that I've that I've looked at that. The the I guess I I don't know if I've used it yet this season because I've used it last season and the problem was with the wing attack you never Brave Bird nuked it. But Sucker Punch is hard hitting enough that you probably do now in a lot of these cases. Um, 17 to 21 record is not anything to be excited about, quite honestly. And some of these losses in the one shield, although these sims seem to be a little off, we're going to ignore the fairies and stuff. Um, but there's a lot on this list that is a, in the, like Azumarill, Chart, uh, no, 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 Dugong, Dunsparce, Feraligator, Claude Sire is an even, Toxpex is even, and then you got some wins against, these are like f grass, you should win against grass. Um, and, and then the mud boys, which you should like ground, you should win against ground as a flyer anyways. Right. So I guess, I guess it makes sense. The other thing with Galarian Moltres is a lot of people are now shiny hunting for it because, um, the new shinies are released and with the shinies, they don't run. So you can catch it now. So before it was an accessibility issue. Now, again, it's not accessible in my opinion, but now it is more accessible than it has been in the past. Um, so yeah, so those are my thoughts on the top 12. Um, in terms of these top 12, I think that in terms of what I like using, um, I really like, I think Clotzar is strong. I don't like using it, but I think Clotzar is strong. I like using Malamar, Dugong, Feraligator, Drapion. I really like using these Pokemon. I do like using, I don't love using it, but I know Superior is strong with those Frenzies. I, I think Toxpex with Brian is ugh, Brian is such a bad move. I can't get over it. And yes, I understand the strengths of Dunsparce with like oh, no fighters in this meta. So your only one weakness is fighting and there's not a lot of them. The non-stab charge moves though, I just kill. But they're so good coverage. I don't know. Truly, these I do think these... I'm not surprised. I'm not totally surprised to see these 12. Um, You know... I didn't see what the top like 18 were, but I would not be surprised if like Gastrodon is in the top 18. I wouldn't be surprised if um, someone just went like a fast move Bastiodon in the top 18. Um, but like these are not totally like crazy to think about as top 12 Pokemon. Anyways, I thought I'd just bring you this as opposed to another crappy, crappy little cup. Um, so that is it. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I, I'm sorry for all the ads. If you want to know why there are so many ads on my videos now, please go watch the video this morning um, explaining like what is happening to my channel. Uh, so anyways, that is it. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.